You turn up to this job, do you prefer to use this or this? So why the question? What difference does it really make? Well, quite a lot really. We're all sort of guilty of this to some extent. You find something that works and you stick with it. Are you a multi-finish guy or a board finish guy? Do you prefer blue grit or PVA? Do you like weather or K-Rend? See, we sort of get these little things in our head where we use one product and then we stick with it. Now, a lot of people think that bonding and hard wall are the same thing, they're a background plaster. That's why I like bonding, so I just use bonding and he likes hard wall and he just uses hard wall. But to be quite honest with you, bonding and hard wall are two completely different products. And they're for two completely different applications. You see, your bonding is made for smooth and low suction backgrounds. So that'll be things like plasterboard and painted surfaces or pretty much any sort of surface that you've sealed with PVA glue or blue grit or SBR. So because you use your bonding in them situations and you get used to it, that seems to be like your go-to plaster all the time. And then you come across a bare brick wall. So you go and get your bonding. And then you realize it's an absolute bastard. So you're trying to float with bonding and the stuff's drying out curling up, cracking all over, because it's a higher suction background. Now I'm not saying it's impossible. You can soak the walls down. You can PVA the walls or put some sort of sealer on them. But then when you're trying to rule it off, bonding's very sticky. It's not the easiest thing in the world to work with. When you're trying to build it up to a certain thickness and you've got your feather edge out or whatever you're using, it's sticking to everything. It's pulling back off the wall again. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass. And that's where your hard wall comes in. This stuff is just designed for it. It's so much nicer to use. It's ideal for going over your brickwork, your dry blocks, all that sort of stuff. Hard wall is just a, it's a different level of stuff. And not only that, it's lovely to rule off. When you're using it, it's not sticky. So as you're ruling off, you can just drop it back on your spot board or back into your bucket with no hassle. To be fair, the way I look at it is, I want to use hard wall for everything. And the only instances I can't use it is if I've got to go over paint or plasterboard. I wouldn't like to use it on engineering brick, but there's not many, there's not many houses I've worked on that I built out of engineering brick. So I don't really worry about that. But either way, plasterboard and painted areas, bonding. Anything else, I want to get me hard wall on the go. Now, you can use bonding in all situations, but you've just got to sort the walls out, you've got to seal the walls. But if you want to spend all your time knocking walls off and then seal them just to use bonding, which is sticky as hell and a nightmare to rule off with, when you could use hard wall, which, which is absolutely lovely to use for floating. Now, the reason I made this video is because I've noticed, seems to be a lot of younger lads that are stuck for choice, they don't know whether to go with bonding or hard wall, and they use the bonding all the while, so then they just start trying to float with it, which, as I said to you, you can make it work, but there's a better product, use hard wall. And there's another group of people I've noticed as well, which is like my old fella's generation, that were brought up on sand and cement, or there wasn't much dot and dabbing or any dabbing at all in them days, they, they were just sand and cement boys, and then they got onto the, um, the browning, do you remember browning? Do you remember the size of them bags? There was tough coat. I don't know how many lads used tough coat. I never used it. Um, I, I always did a bit of browning or sand and cement. Well, anyway, now the hard wall. Trust me, if you've been trying to float with with bonding, you're gonna love hard wall. But if you wanted to save a few quid, you could always use sand and cement, like the old boys used to. Uh, a lot of fellas still out there using it now. I do myself. If I've got a full house to do, I'd rather use sand and cement. Oh, little, um, little bonus tip for you. If you're working in an old house that doesn't have a cavity, it's a solid nine inch brick wall, don't use bonding or hard wall to float the walls or fill patches out. 
it flipping sucks the moisture through it and you end up with little damp patches on the walls inside so it might be fine it'll set and you can skim it and it'll all look wonderful and it'll dry out but over time it'll draw moisture through and there'll be little damp patches that appear all over the place wherever you've stuck it so don't use it on solid nine inch walls or um, if there's been a damp proof course done you cannot use bonding and hard wall to, to float the bottom of the wall unless you put a membrane on but we're going down different avenues just stick to your sand and cement or your thistle dry coat british gypsum do a, a bag product called dry coat uh, i'll be honest with you can't talk about it because i've never used it i'm a sand and cement guy myself or a membrane but anyway just thought i'd let you know that i don't don't know coming at me shouting at me because i haven't told you you've been told don't put it on a nine inch solid wall Right, I hope that cleared a few things up for you. I'm off out for a few more of these before the missus pins me down. So as usual, guys, if you enjoyed that, give us a little thumbs up. If you think it could help someone, give it a share. But whatever you choose to do, thanks for watching. Right, for any of you that have made it this far to the end of the video, I've got a little treat for you. Take a screenshot of this. This is British Gypsum's Thistle Essential Selector Guide. It will show you what plastics you can use in what situations. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one.